Hi there, I'm Amy with Eclectica, and I am here today to show you a little bit about coloring on fabric. It's a unique challenge because most of the time we're not encouraged to color on fabric, you usually color on paper, but um, most of Eclectica's items are actually coloring on fabric. So, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of information, help you pick out the right items, and get you a little bit more comfortable in case you weren't sure of what you were doing. Uh, the first pack of markers I wanted to kind of share with you um, is the Tulip brand fabric markers. I, this is my favorite pack. It's a 20 pack, so you see that there's a wide variety of colors that way. They do come in some smaller sizes, so if you're not needing 20 markers, you can just go to any of the local craft stores and pick up a smaller pack. Uh, this is also the package that I carry so if you buy them from me, this is what you'll get. And I'm just going to show you. I have one that's out of the package already. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to show you just a little example right in here. This is, it's a nice tight tip. And you can go in there. This is an extremely detailed pillow. And as you can see, I just colored a little small area there. You can color nice tight details on these and this is also I just wanted you to kind of see how tight that tip is okay put that one away the next ones I'm going to show you are my second favorite these are the stained by sharpie I got a brand new package of them so they're not even open and I'm just going to tear into them um, these are my, I say my second favorite. The only reason I think they're my second favorite is a package of these only has eight colors and I just need more variety than that with a lot of my coloring. And, uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm coloring a lot in purples today. So I'm going to pull the purple out again, stained by Sharpie. Um, these can be bought online in town. The only place I've seen is Hobby Lobby that carries them. But as you can see, it's an extremely nice tight end on that. Um, it's a it's a brush tip is what they call these. Uh, one of the few brush tips I actually like because it really is a nice tight brush tip. These are just the best ones for detail work. I'll bring it down here and I'll show you just another little area. Let's see, we'll color the right here. And I can use this like right now I'm going through and just doing the outline of that flower of that layer of the flower I tend to that's the way I color it's the way I've always colored I do outlines and then I color on the inside I'm sure some of the other people watching this kind of learn that way too and as you can see, just beautiful, vibrant colors. That is what I like the most about this. You get the vibrancy and you get just a really true um, primary and secondary colors. Um, if you're working on a pillow or a zipper bag or anything that I carry, if you're working on one that has, you know, more youthful things they tend to really like the bright colors and so these are really nice for for things for children school children things of that nature my second favorite um i just recently purchased this box and this is the crayola fabric fine line markers uh, they're surprisingly good i was not so sure of them because i have played with some other crayolas before and um, I just really, I'm pretty happy with the tip. I'll show you that. It's a nice, very tight tip again. The one downfall I will give you on these fabric markers, um, the Crayola brand ones, is they um, have to be heat set. And so with them having to be heat set, the downfall is that you have to heat set them. It's just an extra step. If you don't mind doing that, these are fantastic markers. And I'm going to have uh, Jason just go down here onto the pillow so I don't take an extra second and color a little bit more. This green line right here, 
the vibrancy you can see in that color and the detail that was colored with the Crayola one just earlier today when I was testing out my new markers so you can see that they're just fantastic markers um, I have a couple other ones those are in sets that these are how I prefer to buy them but sometimes you either find sets in other brands that you're not sure of or you see uh, single items and so I've got additional ones I'm going to go through with you this of course came from the tulip set the next one over this is a Marvi Ushida a wearable art fabric marker um, this is no ironing needed uh, it is another brush tip, but it's a nice tight brush tip on that one. And um, I'll flip it around so you can kind of see the label a little bit. That that's what this I, I purchased on its own. Um, and of course, I, I think it was Joann's, but um, they changed their stuff out. So don't quote me that you're going to find it there. But this one I really do like for... Um, another for another brush tip and there are certain colors that if you're coloring um, the fall one I have you're gonna go through a lot of green you're gonna go through a lot of brown and you're gonna go through a lot of orange and so you end up having to either buy multiple sets to get all the colors you want or you may end up just going and finding a single item like I did the other ones I really like here these are a liquid based one so you have to shake it up like this and you can hear the noise of that liquid uh, this is a also by Marvi Ushida uh, deco fabric and this one is kind of a pearlescent white um, what I really like about that one is again it's a pretty tight one and this one has been used a lot so you see a few little fuzzies that come up you just go in there and pull them off with tweezers or clean it up a little as you go just to make sure you don't have a problem. But this is fantastic because you're going to get seasonal pillows that have snowmen or you're going to get things that you just want a little touch of white on. And this is the great option for that. I also have a glitter deco fabric that is a similar, also a Marvi Ushida. Um, this one's in silver metallic and this one I really like for the same reason same tip and if you wanted to kind of zone into this fish one here let's find I I know I've used this one on there yeah some of the eyes some of the eyes I don't know how you go into this yep. one so you can see that and I've done even some of the little flowers I'll do just the little centers just for a nice little accent and I really have liked that about these and now I'm going to talk to you about the ones that I'm not as crazy about these are um, some of them are ones that I've bought in I think all of them are ones I've bought in sets or I did buy one single one but um, I'll give you the reasons why I'm not as crazy about them and you can make your decision on whether or not it works for you based on what you want to do this is another Marvi um, fabric marker that this was sold individually I think also at Joann's um, it is a chisel tip and what I don't like about the chisel tip is while you've got one side that you can go in really nice and tight and color on the other side seem to get in the way and somehow when you're sitting there trying to color super tight you make the wrong move and it gets a little in the wrong space so I'm not crazy about the chisel and um, I just haven't had good success myself with it, so I don't suggest that. The next one is another chisel. I'll show you this one. This is the Tulip Graffiti chisel tip. What it says there. And then it's a, another purple chisel tip. Beautiful tip on it. It's a good marker. Not so much for the detail work. So... Um, again, if you're coloring some that don't have quite as much detail, you might be fine with these. Or if you're going to use fabric markers for other uses, you might like these. The next one is, again, another Marvi Ushida. This brand is a brush tip. 
and I've seen these in multiple different sets of colors and everything. I'll show you the outside of it. This came from a set, but that tip is a little bit um, larger than some of the other brush tips I've had. It's already, you know, it's getting a little icky here that I probably should kind of clean it up, but um, it's hard to do details with this. It's really a perfectly fine marker if you're going to color large areas, and that's what I tend to use these on um, if I'm doing an area that has, a, you know, a great deal of area to color, they're fine, uh, but they're just not my, my perfect ones. Um, then I've got a couple other ones. These are a little more obscure ones that I found at strange places like a, a random buy-in online or I think I even got one set at Aldi. This one is the Graphics, I believe is what that says. Um, it's very, very small print and uh, my eyes are getting old. I think it says Graphics Fabric Marker. Nice tip. You would think this would be great these bleed. It, you can tell it's just a very uh, thin um, ink to it and it just tends to bleed and that's not something that people who don't color a bunch on these should really mess with because I'm a little bit more experienced and I still have problems when I know it's a, a bleeding marker. This one is another one, Alex, that it has a uh, brush tip. It's a decent brush tip. It's not bad. Um, I'd still not want to use it a lot on really tight areas, but it bleeds. So not as bad as the last one, but it still bleeds plenty. Um, I still view it as I'm going to have a use for all of these. I have a ton of fabric markers in my little personal collection that I just keep them all because so, I want to experiment with everything. And so I do have just plenty of these. And the next thing I kind of want to go through with you now that we've looked at all the good and the bad is I kind of want to show you some examples of how to make techniques work for you. We're going to bring over this pillow. This is one of my very first original Color Me pillows. Um, I made this out of an Ikea fabric that used to be available. And um, they were pretty popular, but then I changed shape and and change the way I was doing things so these are no longer available but this also has a lot of good technique in it so this is why I brought this pillow out to show you up at the top here I show on this building the windows the the top window and the second window they have some really good techniques towards the blending and you can see I wanted the light on the window but you could kind of view it like maybe that's a little bit of a sheer or a shadow going off in those windows that show just a little bit extra there. Um, <clears throat> it does a little bit up here at the top as well. And then you'll find it multiple times within this pillow that I just played with blending by um, allowing it to bleed. The, a couple of the other techniques I really like to use is if you're starting to run out of colors, up here is a really good example of this, is I kind of soften the colors by using what I call pointillism. So up here, this is just black, and all I did was put a lot of little teeny polka dots. And by doing that, if you were further away from it, because there's still white within there, it's going to look more gray, more like an asphalt instead of the jet black of like the building next to it. You can see that there's a contrast, a different color. Um, I did that also in these little areas of the window. Those I believe look like they have a color on the background, might be a pale yellow with red dots over the top. It's a very, very fine point and if you're doing this technique, be sure not to be super aggressive with your touch because you're going to damage the tip of that marker if you are really, really harsh with it. Just lightly tap the marker and then you're going to get your dots. Um, a couple of the other techniques we have through here. I uh, This tree here in the center, you know, you don't want to use just one color of green, variegate it. And then that's going to make it look like um, a multifaceted, really cool tree. Uh, just makes it a little bit more unique. Um, right here, 
and these windows in the center building there. I'm calling that kind of like a stained glass. I took a black marker and kind of made lines through there and then let it dry just slightly and then you go over the top of it with the different colors and that's going to give you all your different illusions there. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? I definitely used pointillism of a couple different greens down here in this tree. Really like my pointillism. Then I know, like if you look at this flag here, I use a couple different marker colors and I'm calling that cross hatching. And so what that is, is you're going to put lines all one direction with one marker and then lines all the other direction with another and you can go up to like four directions with different markers and that gives you that technique. I've got it there. I know I found another place that I did that earlier. Oh, right up here on around the door frame. I've got blue cross hatching there. So this kind of just shows you all the different techniques. Um, don't be afraid to play with the markers. Uh, the way I would suggest is if you are going to experiment, do it on a bigger area. It's, you know, a little bit easier not to mess up when you've got like this large mailbox or, you know, this swing is a, is a pretty large swing area and uh, pairs with that, you know, I colored that one just one color, but it could have been multiples. And we're going to just take a look down here. I've got an example of some bleeding. I, I experimented just shortly ago. This is four different colors of the outside. These two are the ones that I played with, the, these here, that bleed extensively. I did an outline in these colors. And then I came in on the inside and just colored it all over with this lighter purple. And so you can see that's just what kind of the bleeding technique will do. Um, and like I said, don't be afraid. If you have questions about techniques, you're always welcome to contact me. Um, and if you have any questions about what I'm doing here, for instance, I know these are billows, but it can be confusing because they're all flat. Um, it does say on the tags when I, when I sell these to you, it does suggest that you put cardboard in the pillow and that is so that it does not seep through when you're coloring. Uh, it just gives it another layer so the back still stays nice, although that's incredibly wrinkled, sorry. Uh, it just kind of gives you a good solid surface. It's easier to color on solid things than it would be to color on a plush pillow and on top of that it's protecting the backing. So um, I think that covers most of what I wanted to talk to you today. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to message me. I'd be glad to help out any way that I can. Um, again, I'm Amy Poker with Eclectica where we encourage you to color outside the lines.